Welcome to the Subconscious Mind Mastery Podcast. Thomas Miller here on the road in the van traveling around the state of Florida. And part of the travels that I had set up was an invitation from Fred Dotson to come over to his home for lunch. Well, we had an audio book come out just maybe two days before we got together, so we obviously recorded a podcast. But there was another invitation that I am equally excited about. If you're catching this in real time, that is in the early part of 2023, Fred is doing the one seminar of the year, the Levels of Energy Live course, May 26, 27, and 28. The registration information is right on the homepage of realitycreation.org. And Fred asked me to help him basically deliver the seminar. So doing a lot of the behind the scenes and detail work to help him stay focused on delivering the course. And I'll be able to help him facilitate that with greater ease. And I am so honored not only to be invited, but also to have obviously said, well, absolutely. So you might want to take a look at that. Go to realitycreation.org. It is right there on the homepage. And if you can come to Florida in May, we would love together to see you there. We talk about this at the end of the interview. But right now, let's jump into our conversation about the new audiobook. One of the ones that I think is one of the now staples of the Fred Dodson Library, Clearing Entities. First of all, I'd like to thank you for inviting me into your home. You're welcome, Thomas Miller. Welcome to my place. This is great. We've been doing these podcasts and books together for about 10 years now, almost coming up on 10 years, and uh, both rendezvoused in Florida, and it's a privilege to spend some time with you here. So thank you. Happy you're here. Interestingly, our friends at Audible about 48 hours ago released the book that we're going to talk about today. So perfect timing from their standpoint as well clearing entities and i think that you have this trilogy or had this trilogy of reality creation technique parallel universes of self levels of energy that people would always say where should i start well those are the big three right well now the big three are big five because you have to add to that you can heal anyone and now clearing entities not that there are not 40 books that can change your life, but these five, I think, now are the imprint of must-have, must-listen-to, must-read Fred Dodson books. Would you agree? Oh, it's interesting you say that because that was my viewpoint. My viewpoint was that Clearing Entities is a side, side book. Really? For um, further field, yeah. But if you say so... Thomas says this is an absolute must read, so I guess I'll go along with that. If somebody wanted to really absorb most everything that you've done, they have to do the, the three, it's, now five. It's levels of energy, parallel universes, and you can heal anyone as far as I'm concerned. Because the basics of clearing entities, you, you find them and you can heal anyone. Yes, that's true. Yeah. That's true. However, I don't know that people separate entities from reality as we know it. So that's where I was designating that as until you get the fact that there are entities and that's ingrained and that we are dealing with them all the time, which we don't seem to think about. So it becomes an awareness thing. Until that's aware, until that's in your consciousness, it's something that you need to focus on for a while until you get it. Yeah, I find it interesting that it is so ingrained in our culture. Every single ancient culture uh, knows about entities. And if you ask your granny and your aunt and anyone really, everybody's dealt with entities in some way, in some form or another. And then we have uh, the so-called scientific community coming and saying no such thing exists, even though everybody's dealt with it, everybody's had experiences with it, everybody knows about it, and everybody can relate to what I'm saying in the book. You have these people from the so-called scientific community saying, 
No such thing exists. And that's where the split is. And that's why I wrote the book, because it's something everybody knows about already, but not because they don't talk about it openly. And it's funny that the moment you showed up here, Thomas, you started talking about your own entity experiences, including Ted Bundy in Aspen, which is an interesting story for another time, perhaps. Because that's the response of every single person I've talked to about the book. They'd say, Oh, Fred, I have this story. Oh, Fred, I have that story. So it's somehow everybody knows it and not. And isn't that a beautiful example of how education has failed us completely? Everybody should know about entities. It's an they are the other densities are an integral part of our life. They are other densities, but they're there. They do exist. And sometimes the densities kind of merge. They're supposed to be separate, but they're not that strictly separate. If you put oil and water together, they are separate, but there's a certain place where the oil and water mix just a little bit. And that's where entities comes in. Sometimes we've played chapters from the books. I'd like to read this because I grabbed this and made a note of it for us to talk about. This is from chapter one. You said there are two ways to sustain high levels of success. One is through working on yourself a lot from within physical fitness, nutrition, or if you're too lazy for that, you solicit the help of hungry ghosts. One is called spirituality and conscious living. The other demonism. Much of what is called spirituality, quote unquote, nowadays could more accurately be termed demonism. That's a shocking statement to some, but to others, it comes as no surprise. And then a little later on, you said, there is no movement, ideology, religion, or philosophy that has not been contaminated by demonism. I thought, wow, that's an enormous scenario and statement. That's where I'm saying it's everywhere. It, it is everywhere. That's why I do reality creation, because reality creation says you are not dependent on entities, which is demonism, dependence, you know, and you see it in, in every area. You see it in churches when people uh, weep in front of statues. In my opinion, these statues are can be charged with entities, you know, and then they worship a statue in church. And it's funny because their own religion speaks out against that, but they don't know what they're doing. So to me, the entire religion has been infiltrated, contaminated, diverted from its original teaching, which is that the power is within you. And it literally says that, but that's not what you learn in church. I could write another book about what the Bible says versus what church does. It's amazing, okay? There's not a single church out there. Now, this is going to be controversial, but there's not a single church out there that actually does what it says in the Bible. What does it say in the Bible? It says uh, to go out, wander around, and heal people. It doesn't say worship statues. It doesn't say uh, go to a building Sunday and listen to somebody lecture you. It says go out and heal people. That's, that's what they're doing in the Gospels. That's literally, they're, all they're doing is driving out entities, the entire Gospels. And it's been a long time since I've seen that happen in any church whatsoever. It's, it's rare, okay? It's rare because churches who do that, they're looked on as cooks, as, as weird. You know, Ooh, look at those. But that's literally what it's all about. So where do you find it? Then you look in the alternative spirituality movement and it's it's really bad i've been to so many events that were just uh dependence creating dependence on a guru which is kind of demonism you don't need to worship a guru you don't need to uh you don't need someone to have the power for you you were equipped and that's my message with the power already you've already that's the funny part Right. I always see it as uh, I envision these folks in heaven looking down at us. They've equipped us with the divine power. And there we are begging them to help us, you know, and we're like, well, what's wrong with you people? We've given you everything you need. You have it all. You have the talent. You have the energy. 
You have the intuition. You're equipped with a very strong body that has self-healing properties. You have the power to heal. You personally, every single person out there, and they're looking at us, and why are do they keep begging us? Because they keep they keep begging us because they've been indoctrinated with all these weird beliefs. You know, oh, please, please help us down here, us poor sinners. Well, it's that's not so. It's not so. So I look into the alternative spirituality movement. I see it everywhere. People creating new dependencies and weird teachings also. Very weird stuff. I went to this. I got to share this story. We went to this conference and it was, uh, it was all lies. The whole thing was lies. But I could see it's all demonism. It's all entities. That's all they talked about. The entire event was entity-based. They, they were acting like they were helping people, but in the end, they weren't. I, I was shocked. You know, I thought, what the heck is going on here? Well, and that's, again, back to this idea that until you embrace that this is, as you just said, let me read that line again. There is no movement, ideology, religion, or philosophy that has not been contaminated by demonism or by entities. Yes. Uh, I see that time and time again. Even what you, I mean, you can advertise anything, but what does it come down to? And I wrote the book Clearing Entities so that people know when they visit these events, you know, what's the gist of it? What pisses me off, which is why I wrote the book, is all these events and teachings that lead you on a path of an entity zapping your energy. That's what reality, reality creation has secretly been all about all along, taking back your energy, you having the power, you not needing an entity to do it for you. There are some big ticket authors these days who are channelers. Same thing? Yeah, that's all entities, all entity based. Um, that's not to say that the information is invalid. Entities know a lot because they're non-physical. So you read a channeled book, it can often, not always, but often it can tell you more because entities know more, but that does not make them, just because they know more doesn't mean you have to get dependent on them. Just because they know more doesn't mean they are superior to you. You are superior in your ability because you have a physical body plus a spirit, and most of these entities wish they had a body, right? They wish they were incarnate. So I teach skepticism toward entities. I believe in skepticism. I think some channeled books are pretty good, pretty intelligent, but in general, I'm, I'm skeptical. You know, I want to know who is it I'm talking to. And if you can't see it, you, you never know. Who, who am I talking to? Show yourself. You know, show yourself. And what are your intentions? Just like with human beings, okay? With anybody, you want to know who you're dealing with. I don't know why people are lack critical thinking just because they're dealing with something invisible. If you're dealing with something invisible, there should be more critical thinking. You know, you're, you're so skeptical of the humans you interact with. Just apply the same skepticism to the non-physical. There's all kinds of stuff out there. But some of it is not good because some of it intends to get energy. It's about keeping the energy, raising the energy, levels of energy. Here's another section. You said after a person dies, certain outer layers of their personality shatter to pieces, leaving only a person's essence or soul. And then for the next section, you talked about dabbling, for example, with music. If you dabble with music, that doesn't leave an imprint. But if you are totally immersed in music, and music becomes your life, perhaps, even your vocation, then you were, as you say, immersed or obsessed with music to a point of fanaticism. That becomes a fragment with a life of its own, and it continues to exist in the astral realm. When I read that, I thought, wow, that means that the things that we become obsessed with in a good or bad way can linger. 
Yeah. You need to watch out before you die, in my view. You need to let go a little bit as not to create too many of those afterlife astral bits and fragments. If you could see what happens at death, you'd also say, okay, I need to let go of a few things before I die. Because if you're obsessed with something, it's going to continue on after the body goes away. Why? Because you were never the body to begin with. So if you understand life from you're not the body anyway, then whatever you're obsessed with, of course, it'll, it goes on after the body's gone. And you see this, if you see into the astral realm, you see how the, the soul goes away, but there's still this program running. It's so weird. That's what I call a fragment. And this program can get a life of its own. It's almost like as a, in a dumb way, a con repetitive consciousness of its own. And I also believe these fragments can attach on and latch on to people, which is why so many religions and cultures have certain rules for the weeks after somebody dies, by the way. The ancients said that after somebody dies, you got to purify yourself, blah, blah, blah. You got to do this and this and this so that the, the fragment doesn't attach to you. You'll often find this when somebody died, that uh, their health declines in a weird way or their mental state declines in a weird way, which reminds me of something we talked about earlier, by the way. Um, when somebody dies, you got to watch out and you got to stay clean and clear for a couple of weeks until whatever surrounds you dissipates. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I found it to be very true. And I've had a couple of, to me, very real experiences with it. You talk about two different types of these entities. One is just a fractured entity, if you will, a fractal, and the other is demons. Can you distinguish for us the difference? Yeah, the fragment does not have a uh, spirit of its own. It runs out after a while. It just, it tries to survive by parasiting off of our energy. Uh, and it's easy to release simply by command, by telling it to go. Actually, to the listeners out there, you'd be surprised by what happens if you just state a couple of times the command for anything that is not you to leave, for anything that does not belong to leave, for anything that is not of the highest source to leave. If you just state stuff like that once in a while, you can achieve a lot, surprisingly much, okay? I just sometimes I just enter a space, anything that is not divine source, leave right now. And that's it. That's how easy it is to get rid of fragments. And the amazing thing is, the results are sometimes miraculous. You know, wow. Um, there's just, if you could see in the astral, it might be kind of gross because there's stuff attached to all kinds of people. And they're walking around and they have all this stuff attached. And you kind of know it. If you look into the world now, it's pretty bad these days. You know, the, the shape people are in. Look at the shape people are in, and then you know about entities. And then there's uh, demons, which are jinn, which are spirits, created spirits. And these are just uh, people with their own kingdom, their own country, their own world, their own consciousness, their own power in different levels. They, they are in different levels of consciousness. Um, lower astral, mid astral, higher astral, and they have their own ways, you know, they, they, and sometimes they live in their own places on earth, like in the woods, they don't want to be bothered by humans, so some, you know, and, or in the, in the mount, inside mountains or inside earth or wherever. And some of them do want to bother humans and do want to get inside humans. Some want to be for themselves. And those are, they can also disappear by command because you've given, you've been given power over them. But this is nothing unusual. We, so many stories, so many movies, you know how many movies there are on this topic? If you look it up, you'll find 
hundreds of thousands of movies just on that topic, and then you tell me it doesn't exist. Well, if it doesn't exist, why do we have 100,000 movies on the topic? Of course it exists. People know it exists. You know, the biggest problem in all of this are not the demons. It's the so-called scientific community that tells us it doesn't exist. That is the real problem in this world, not the demons. We can handle the demons. Just like, get out of here. Okay, this is not your space. Get out of here. But the scientific community, who is this? Who is this entity that says it doesn't exist, doesn't exist, this doesn't exist? Saying that puts a block on us being able to deal with and handle the reality around us. You know, if I, I can say, uh, well, you got an entity, let's get rid of it. I believe most people have entities. But if you say it doesn't exist, well, then it's never going to be ha handled. And if it's not handled, then what? Well, I'll tell you then what. Then pharmaceuticals. And that's where... Um, I, I believe that's the real problem. The pharmaceutical industry spreading propaganda, it doesn't exist, doesn't exist. That's who be, who's behind most of the problems we have these days. And do pharmaceuticals heal a person? No, they just cover up what's already there. So I was going to ask, why do you think they're covering it up? That's what it is. Profit. I was just staying with my brother in Ormond Beach and... There's the home, the summer home of John D. Rockefeller, and you can tour it. There's the gist or the genesis, if you will, of the modern ph pharmaceutical industry was John D. Rockefeller. He instituted the medical school program that we have today that was funded by the pharma companies, which, of course, he had his fingers in. Makes for a nice summer home. Yeah. Before I'd even go to entities, I go to solving the problem of pharmaceutical companies, honestly. But that's because it's outside of my field of expertise. I focus on the entities, which is great too. You can solve a lot of problems by getting rid of entities. A lot of problems. I'm not saying everything is entities, but I've, I've sometimes I've treated things that weren't entities as, as entities and still solve them. Because everything is energy in a way. Whether it's an energy or an entity doesn't make that much of a difference. I just want to get rid of it. I want it to heal. I can command it to heal. I can dissolve it, regardless of whether it's an entity or an energy. Hope that makes sense. But if I were to, if I had the funds, I'd probably try to target the pharmaceutical industry. It's just unacceptable, especially after what happened between 2020 and 2022. I think everybody knows what happened. I don't have to even have to say it, okay? Especially after that. It is just enough. Enough already. We, we have to figure out how we're going to proceed um, with our health care and how we see health versus the billions of dollars that they spend to teach us differently. One of the other topics that I had pulled out of here to discuss with you is addictions. And we're only a kissing cousin away from talking about that in the same context as pharmaceuticals, because they do become addictive. But also anything that anybody needs in their body in order to do daily life could be classified as an addiction. You have to smoke because you have an addiction to nicotine. You have a sugar addiction that alcohol satisfies quite nicely. Whatever it is that you have to have on a regular, almost daily basis, is there a correlation with entities and or gin demons? I often treat addictions as entities, just assuming, you know. Sometimes I don't even go to normal addiction techniques. I'm in coaching and I just treat it without even telling the person. I treat it as an entity. And I just say, well, imagine there was something there inside you that is addicted to that. Let's just imagine, you know, as a game. And uh, what might that thing look like? And what might it feel like? And how big might it be? And what does it want? In, in that, along those lines, I just treat it that way because humans, the divine power that you are is not addicted. And it's a great, great thing to be free of compulsions. If you want a higher level of consciousness, that's the first step. 
Okay, uh, the first step to a better life, to a higher consciousness, is to be free of compulsion and addiction. Happily, I'm. it took me a long time. I'm 48 now. I'm finally free of any sort of compulsion. Finally. It took a long time. I used to be a smoker. I used to be addicted to chewing gum. I used to be addicted to certain foods. I used to be addicted to coffee all kinds of stuff, you know, compulsions. But a conscious human being is not addicted. I personally, if there's a compulsion, I see it as not me, but as entity. I see everything that is involuntary, and that's a good way to live, by the way, even regardless of whether it's true or not. If there's something involuntary, it's not me, because I am reality creator. So if I have a compulsion, need to, must to do something, that, that's not me. That must be an entity, go away entity, right? I want to be in choice. And that's a beautiful place to be, Thomas, choice. I'm surprised um, you say it took a long time to shed a lot of those things because of the reality creation. It's like they do get in the way. It's almost like a block. Yeah. Because you have to have this earthly thing that takes a little bit of that creative space away, doesn't it? It really does. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm the same way. I've been free of anything for a number of years. I guess I stopped drinking alcohol in 2018 when I was still in Aspen, of all places, to <laughs> stop drinking alcohol. The, 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 the cold. In, when I was there, they, Pitkin County received the distinguishable award of being the healthiest county in Colorado hmm. and also the most drunk. <laughs> it's a culture that's built on alcohol. I decided to quit drinking there for that reason, because I saw that people couldn't function without it. And I just thought that needs to go. That needs to you know, be free. Yeah, I, I drank, I actually drank for the first time in a year just two weeks ago in, in Aspen, in fact. Mm, yeah. Because I had whiplash. Um, I had a skiing accident. Ouch. And it was... Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I'm good. You can heal anyone. You can self-heal. Uh, I'm good. But uh, it was such such excruciating pain, and my techniques weren't working on it because I wanted it too quickly, okay? We're talking whiplash. So I dra drank a bunch of eggnog, and it was, if you never drink alcohol, it is so beautiful. If you never, you know, if you normally never drink it, and I normally don't drink it. I think the last time I drank was actually the December before. So I drink every December. <laughs> um, but um, Happy New Year. It, it helped me relax and feel what it's like uh, to be healed. And then subsequently, I could heal it much more quickly. So it was gone in about three days with, with a little bit of uh, neck stretching. Of toddy. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's when you, when, when you know your techniques, you can heal it more quickly. I know people, they've had this, and it's gone on for weeks and weeks and weeks. What do you think about the progression of society right now related to entities? Are they getting more control over us? Well, there's a lot of change happening, so that can get emotions up. I don't necessarily want to blame everything on, on entities, you know. But in general, no, I got to say the entities have always tried. This is, it's, it is going on nowadays, but they've always tried. They've always tried to gain access because they're in a state where they want backed on earth. I say in the book, our earth is their heaven. From, from the density, from their density, our earth looks like heaven. They'd love to get back into a body just a little bit and feel that energy and that sex and whatnot. So there's always been a scheme and they always lose. It's, fun, it's, the, it's a tragic comedy. They, they're always scheming to take over since thousands of years in my view and they always lose in the end. <laughs> because it's not possible to for that density to take over this density. It's just not the way things work. The reason they're here for you is because you're in a, on a plane, in a realm, where you're supposed to choose. 
And if you don't choose wisely and start descending, they're going to start surrounding you. That's just the way it is. So they're supposed to be here, you know, but you who are listening to these things, you're f fairly safe. I got to say, you're fairly safe because you're conscious. One other piece of this puzzle, I guess, that you talked about was cutting cords. I talk about cords in the book, which might be a new concept to many people. The way I see it is that anybody who has a relationship with anyone, there's an energy cord between them. Anybody who's made an agreement with anyone, there's an energy cord. Any relationship you've ever been in, anybody you've ever had sex with, anybody you've ever done business with, there's to some extent cords. And throughout a life, people have all these cords, and I believe, or I see, I saw, that some of these cords are, they're not healthy. For example, a mother might be too controlling of her daughter, and the cord might look unhealthy, right? So I suggest in the book to imagine these cords, or to feel them, or to sense them, and to cut all of them, all of them. And then you can re-choose. You can redevelop cords with people that you want to stay in relationship with, or that you want a healthier, a fresh, a new relationship with. Does that sort of make sense? Yes, definitely. Okay. Definitely. I've had to do that recently, and it is clearing. And especially if two people who were together are no longer together, and they both will do a cord cutting, that makes it really powerful mm -hmm. because then you get a mutual agreed upon release yeah. that says, I wish for you the best future. I retain the good parts of when we were together. And now I release you to be free and I am free. And that, that's kind of what I did well, that's specifically. Yeah. And it was very, and she did too. And it was very effective. Well, it's that, that people don't understand that the people they've broken off with, there's still a cord there. That's what they don't understand. They think they can just go about their life as if nothing ever happened. But you're still influenced by the thoughts and feelings of the people you were with until you cut that cord officially and, and say goodbye. And while you're in that relationship, you can strengthen that cord and it can be incredibly powerful mm -hmm. and serve you very well. Yep. So it's not a negative thing no. by any means. No. Well, this has been great, and I really appreciate you adding to the repertoire of the musts, the Fred Dodson musts, and we'll start <laughs> telling people when they say, well, what book should I start with? Well, there are five now that at least you should start with, but uh, great topics, and thank you for continuing to expose us to challenging new, fresh material. You're very welcome. So, Fred, it's 2023, and I guess we're going to New Smyrna. Yes, the Levels of Energy course this year, as you know, I do one event a year. It'll be 26th to 28th of May. New Smyrna is a quaint little beach town that a lot of people from further up north will appreciate. And we'll go daily from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. So there's still enough time for those who seek the beach to go to the beach and catch some rays. And Thomas Miller will be part of the team this time, officially. And before I forget it, I would like to say one thing to the listeners out there. Is that okay? Absolutely. Most of you don't know, Thomas Miller is actually single. <laughs> You warned me this might happen. <laughs> He's single and available. I just wanted to get that out there. <laughs> Let's see if he edits it out or or, or Yeah, stays. that's right. That's right. Final editorial decision making here. <laughs> <laughs> you have been my mentor and guide for a decade, so we'll see where this goes. Now, the, looking forward to, this, to the event, now give us an idea of what we might expect for the Levels of Energy 2023. Well, it's uh, the top five ascension tools from 30 years of coaching. I've collected five principles and I've created fresh and new exercises that will help you embody those principles. 
By embody, I mean experience a lighter state, experience a more heartful state. If, if you break it down, it's about thinking from the heart, because the heart always knows beforehand. The heart is the part that is actually powerful. People think it's the part that's soft and stupid, but that's actually your power. It's very, very powerful. It knows everything way in advance. It has accurate intuition. It succeeds easily because it just knows everything. The heart knows it all. It's about ascending in consciousness levels. What does that mean? All these slogans, right? Be authentic and uh, ascend in consciousness. We hear these slogans all the time, but what does it mean on a experiential body level? That's what the course is about. I always want to give people an experience so that the person that comes in is not the same that goes out, and the person that goes out is not at all concerned about the topic, because the topic is fully integrated and understood. And henceforth, after the course, there's no more problem with it. You just know the way. You know the way upwards. You know the next step. Always. And Fred has invited me to help partner with him to deliver the course to you. And I'm honored to do that. And it's going to be fun to yep, in be an official function producer, if you will, of mm -hmm. facilitating this so that Fred can focus on delivering the course. And I can take care of a lot of the other details that are obviously inherent with delivering something like this. Beachfront this time, that's going to be nice. So if we're over at four and that will be daylight savings time, we'll have four or five hours to go out and be on the beach and sunset and that kind of thing. Yeah, that is correct. Just to be clear, that gives you four hours of beach time. That's more than anybody will ever need. Most people have had enough of after about one hour or so. Yeah. Because it's intense. And in the evening, the water's warmer. End of May is pretty warm in Florida. It's, a, it's, you know, it's around 85, which is in Celsius, around 27, 28. That's great. That's uh, wonderful for most people who come visiting from elsewhere. It'd be good to get out and go run on the beach and you've been indoors all day. You can get out there and it's swim it off or run it off, jog it off, play it off. In fact, I got really lucky with the room. It is, you, you go out of the room and you're there. Wow. Right there. Yeah, right there. It's, I got very lucky with it. Awesome. Good. Well, we're looking forward to it. And that again, the dates are May. May 26 to 28. I would like to mention that um, the bookings are coming in more quickly than ever. And there is a maximum capacity. So it makes sense to sign up as soon as possible. Now, I remember when you did the one in Orlando last March, which was the first one since the pandemic, it filled up within just a matter of days. And there were a lot of people that didn't get in. Uh, that's right. Last time maximum capacity was 50. This time it's 100, but it's still going to fill up fairly quickly. Yeah. All right. Well, good deal. Thank you very much for allowing me to be a part of it. Yep. Well, we do hope we can see you in Florida, May 26th, 27th, and 28th. Realitycreation.org for more information on that and Audible and iTunes on the book. Now, People ask if you have to have an Audible subscription in order to buy one of Fred's books. The answer is no, you don't. Not even Ray Merriman's book now, the 2023 forecast book, or Steve Forrest's books, the Elements series, and the Endless Sky. You don't have to have an Audible account. I don't have an Audible subscription. And I have a bunch of audiobooks in my Audible account, so you do not need to subscribe to Audible in order to buy their books. But I will tell you a little secret. Often, they're cheaper on iTunes or what is now Apple Books. I tend to see them cheaper by a couple of dollars over there. So if you have access to that, you might do that uh, as an alternative to Audible. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening. Hope you enjoyed this. It's a enormous topic that we all need to be so much aware of. And while you are clearing your path of any entity attachment, <laughs> then you can really enjoy the journey. I'm Thomas Miller. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time.
The stories and opinions expressed on this podcast are independently those of the host and guests and are not intended to be taken as medical advice or to replace medical care from a licensed professional when appropriate.